Welcome at the Batcap, Hernan Romero, guitarist and composer, born in Argentina but raised predominantly in Granada, Spain. You went for a professional guitar and composition education in New York at the Manhattan School of Music. Why did Manhattan and not somewhere else? Well, um, that was the place that makes the most sense uh, in terms of like from Spain to arrive to New York, which is like the center of the, of the world. Yeah. In, in, <coughs> um, the school was very prestigious and uh, I knew a teacher there, Joe Carbone, that was like a, a head of the department of guitar strings uh, and he wanted me to go there and be a tutor, like kind of because I was the only uh, classical flamenco guitar player that already knew how to play from, you know. Yeah. So he gave me, a, he offered me a job and what I did is like I took a, a double major in audio engineer and so I went to, to college and that, um, you know, at the same time, I was teaching, so that kind of paid for my, you know, teacher. Exactly. Yeah. So, so it was kind of like worked out. How did you end up um, in New York at first? Was it a special for the Manhattan or for something else? <clears throat> I was in New York prior when I was 14 and I fell in love with it. Yeah. I was like, in New York is one of those places that you either hate or you love. Yeah. It's not in between. Huh. So I was there for three months and I just totally fell in love with it. Okay. I felt um, that. I, I think New York City is so cosmopolitical, there's so many cultures that you, you feel like you are have a, li a, a little piece of every culture, like mm -hmm. there's a lot of Spanish people, a lot of yeah. like Europeans, so <clears throat> I mean I, I can never see myself living like in Alabama or something like that. You know? <laughs> Hernan, at what age did your passion for the guitar start? I remember holding a guitar, I was like around like six, mm -hmm. and um, it made total sense, you know, I just grabbed it. And I put it on my lap, and I told, it made total sense. Um, I started studying uh, with Roberto Lara back in Spain when I was nine. And of course, when my parents saw that you know I come from a family of musicians, they saw that I was like inclined to to be a guitarist for real. They like they sent me to the best teacher there, right? Very tough guy, uh, Roberto Lara. And um, from nine to fourteen, I was like intensely studying with this guy. Mm -hmm. And at night I was escaping to the flamenco underground, just to, <laughs> which is, was totally wrong, you know. But, I mean, for everybody to, you know, I mean, especially for a white guy like me, yeah. to be in those kind of uh, places. But I, I, I couldn't help it. I just loved the music, so I was, I was quite sneaking out every night just to watch the shows and hang out with the, you know, a lot of gitanos and yeah. great guitar players. So. That was kind of my education. So actually there you find your great love in the form of flamenco. Yeah. And studied <coughs> classical besides that. Also I liked tango a lot. I was, I was a big fan of uh, Astor Piazzolla music. So I, I kind of have like that also Argentinian side, which is like, is in my genes. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me what specific made you fall in love with the instrument <coughs> at such a very young age? I think the shape of the guitar. Yeah. It's, I know it's it reminded corny. you of what? Uh, well, <clears throat> it's a very corny thing, I think, a lot of guitar players say this, but it is one of those things that um, um, it felt so uh, natural to me. Yeah. Like, I play, I play a little bit of piano, mm -hmm. and I play bass, and I'm, I'm a very, I'm a decent percussion player. Mm -hmm. so, because, I, you know, to me, rhythm is the key in music. You know? okay. I'm very, I'm a very, uh, rhythm is one of my strongest things. Mm -hmm. I think... Most of my music is very rhythmical and it's very, you know, I play with syncopations, even when I don't have an instrument. John Lennon said that once you give me bad spans, whatever, I make music out of it. The same thing when I was in high school, I was like always on the table making, you know, like things some music. Um, <clears throat> but guitar captured the rhythm, <clears throat> the, percussion, the percussive side, the melodic and, and the harmony. It's kind of like a very complete instrument. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, if you play trumpet, you play like a monophonic instrument, which is like very limited. It's a melody instrument. For yes. It's not a chord. <clears throat> piano is is is, is complete, yep. but it's not movable. You know, mm -hmm. the problem with the piano is like okay, I'm gonna take yep. a piano. <laughs> <laughs> very difficult. So, for me, um, it just made total sense. Right. When you started to take up the guitar, at that time, did you have other interests and hobbies? Yes, I did. <clears throat> I always liked sports. Okay. Um, S. Which rugby. 
that's so. Yes, okay. I, I play rugby. Um, you still play? I still play. I mean, yeah. you know, my age is kind of hard. Yes, <laughs> now like mine is as well. No, no, I do rugby and yoga just to heal myself after I destroy my body. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really like um, rugby and I like soccer, you know, of course, you know, f- football. We call in, it. in what position were you in? Or are you in, in? in football or in rugby? No, no, rugby. Rugby, I'm a wing. A wing? wing. Okay. Yeah, so I'm a fast fun. runner. Yeah. Besides the, um, the music, which is a very demanding because I, have, I had a very demanding teacher. I was like really involved in these uh, sports, you know, yeah. trying to you know, stay out of trouble. Mm-hmm. Yes, but also uh, uh, to explore the other side of your personality as well. Yes, yes. It's very important. How would you describe your childhood? I understand you have a very music-minded family. I was a very blessed uh, kid because um, we come from a very loving family, like very, <clears throat> we are very close and we're very affectionate um, with a very loving mother, uh, blessed with uh, a very successful career. She just um, won a Grammy. Yeah. And um, I mean, you know, growing up and having a mother that is like your mother, just you love mm-hmm. unconditionally. Yeah. <clears throat> also, to see her on stage and be in low bass, thousands, mm-hmm. it was very. Uh, it made a big impact in my life because you know it made me feel like almost like it was a fairy tale that my mother. I mean, so I, I really, we are very close, and she was always very <coughs> supportive of, of us because you know I am a musician, my sister's a dancer, so my my, my older brother is like a music fan, mm-hmm. but is having another profession. Yes, yes. Okay. So uh, also a rugby player. Oh, good. More professional than me. I mean, he actually made it into some major teams. Yeah, okay. So, uh, like, if you have to say something about my family, I would say, like, I am totally blessed. Mm. Very, very, fortunate. very fortunate. Yes. That's great. The guitar brand of your first real guitar. <clears throat> Absolutely. I'm st- I still have it. Yeah, oh, great. It's a Ramirez uh-huh. um, from 1971. All beat up has holes everywhere. Yeah. And uh, it's a Brazilian rosewood. It's a lovely instrument, mm. and I actually use it in my last record on one of the pieces. Okay. Yeah. It's, but my Ramirez is a very heavy guitar, and it's a very uh, dark sounding guitar. Okay. That was my f- first. <coughs> I started with the best. I had. A, I was very lucky. Like some kid, some people, some kids start playing guitar and they get a piece of crap. I got a very nice guitar. My first guitar was a nice guitar. <laughs> so I was lucky. Is there an ideal guitar sound for you? that you're always after when you're playing. Yes, I'm very... Um, uh, I'm very picky with the sound. I, I play acoustic completely. I use mics. We use, like, grey mics. So I, I bought my own mics on the tour, which is... Uh, they're Earthworks, made by an American company. They're very high-end. So, you know, I always tell engineers, it's like... Uh, it was in the location that I was playing with my band. There was this guy trying to mix the group as we play, and it's like, no, let the faders alone and let the music be, mix itself, we mix ourselves, just make sure that everything is there and that's it, don't, yeah. sometimes they start writing stuff and putting things up and down and, and it's unnatural, because yeah. I believe like the bands can make the natural dynamics, you know what I mean, if we play it like super low, dynamic, pianissimo, whatever, we make it on the stage, yeah. when, when they start doing it from the outside and it becomes, a, they don't know who's doing what, mm. so it's very, you know, yeah. I'm picky with that. Yeah. I could be a pain in the ass. How big is the symbiosis between you and your instrument? Well... Did you ever sleep with a guitar, for instance? No, but sometimes I feel like... like um, let me explain it in a, in, a, in, a, in a graphic way. Okay. Sometimes she yeah. <laughs> gives me a hard time. Like, uh, a guitar is... is, is you, you need to romance it all the time. I, th- I feel like I have to not only keep up with my ability of keep up with that, with the guitar. The instrument will always win. Yeah. Uh, the your limitations, physical limitations, always like makes you, uh, will make you try, try to study and practice. Because you can never end. It's one of those things that you climb. And the higher that you climb, the higher away from you, your goal comes. Because of the instrument, the nature of music is, is, is unlimited. Your limitations of, you know, physical it's what you have to really, uh, you know, try to, um, you know, achieve. So it's a constant battle, 
Mm. But it's a constant, it's a constant romance too. 